couple of slots of parking on that stuff of them towards him, which I'm going to try to work with him and let him park up on the other end. Max pointed out that we have to keep parking at eight feet from the line between us and subway. So I intend to keep that back the eight feet. Uh, we're going to put a cooler in that's uh, 14 by 16. It's going to be on the uh, on the south side of the building. And the reason I'm doing that is so that the diggers can come in and we're basically going to be able to pull right across the end of that so that we can unload them fast and get them out. And that's going to utilize the whole length of the parking lot versus you know trying to do it midway or what have you. Uh, that's pretty much the gist of it. Okay, well, I think that the biggest item we're going to have to talk about and discuss is this traffic flow. Right. Uh, the, the MS and, and police department have both expressed the concerns about that. So what I'm going to do is not discuss that quite yet. Let's see if there are any other topics that we want to clarify or want to discuss first, and then we'll go into that one. Uh, anybody have any, any questions on the, the site plan, on the improvements of the building, or, or anything else? Barbara? Barbara, you, you're still muted. Um, could you, um, the cooler, the loading dock, is that like a temporary structure? Is that is that a permanent thing? Is that um, like a kind of a, a refrigerated truck? What is that that's getting placed next to the building? It's a, it's a panel cooler that uh, slaps together. It's kind of tongue and groove, and it's removable. It's not a permanent structure. It'll uh, pretty much what I'm going to do is uh, almost make it like a, oh, kind of like a Pierre is going to sat on it about three feet off the ground so that it would be low dock height. That was the, just, but it's not a permanent structure, no. So does it have a compressor that's kind of running and uh, noisy for the refrigeration or, or how does that, or how does that it's plugged in somewhere or what? Yeah, it, it's going to wire into the panel right on that end there, and it's not very loud at all. It wouldn't be much louder than running an AC unit. It's not like a, a like my trucks, for instance, you know, with the diesel refrigeration on it, that can get very loud. So one other question, if you do have tenants in both these apartments, um, are you designating parking for them? Where, where would they be? Um, yeah, I'm going to uh, put slots where I shut off the, uh, between me and Subway, I would have them arcing up there so they would be staying out of the flow. And I would have them using the entrance, not the front door, but the end door that's towards Subway. <coughs> and I intend to fence that grass skin area that's there between Subway. He had a fence there, but it was fairly rotten. I'm going to take that and I'm going to fence that in so that they have an area there to, you know, have a picnic table or, you know, a little bit of privacy. Okay. And would there be, um, this is kind of like need to know kind of business location, but are you, are you planning on signage? Would there be just like a sign on the building or out on the street? Or? Yeah, there's a currently, there is a sign post there. I have submitted the paperwork for the sign permit. I, I guess maybe Max doesn't pass that along, but there is a sign that just says Moody Seafood buying, buying daily with a phone number. Yeah, just... Yeah, uh, it's, it's not really planning board business, but I'm just kind of curious how it fell into the parking lot plan. Yeah, yeah but if you look on the plan there, you can actually see there's a sign post that's between the two cuts there. Um, just for everyone's knowledge, uh, there was a sign permit approved by Stan when the everything else was submitted, but that's something that's handled by the code enforcement officer, so I didn't know if that was something everyone needed to know or not. Thanks, Max. 
Thanks, Barbara. Anything else for you, Barbara? Stacy, I hope you can see this here, but that's that's the logo that would be on the sign, and then it just says buying clams daily with the telephone number if it needs it. Yeah. Might have people showing up for some for lunch. Yeah, I know. Moody, you know, Moody's Diner on the hill there. I'm sure they're going to say, what? I wonder if this yeah. is. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? Any other questions or concerns before we get into the, the traffic issue? Jeff has his hand yeah, up. I've got a question. Um, asked it a couple weeks ago, but just for the benefit of everybody. Uh, as far as your uh, plan for blocking off between Subway and you, can, can we go over that ag again? Well, I mean, I'm kind of up in the air, you know, I was going to do whatever, you know, everybody thought was best, so I didn't really want to put some particular on the plan. I mean, I can buy, like, the concrete barriers, which don't look that great, but, uh, you know, I was kind of... <laughs> Hope and maybe to put just some of that, like half barrels and fill them with flowers. You know, we'd only take about four or five across there to close it off and it would look decent. Or we could move them if we had to down the road during the winter for snow plowing, something to that effect. But, um, you know, I'm willing to do whatever, you know, you guys would recommend. That sounds nice. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I lean more towards. towards yeah. Actually, I lean more towards just getting something formal on the plan that requires a barrier, um, and then leave the actual barrier to the code enforcement officer or the, any owner. If you're right, the barrels make perfect sense. I think that would be a good thing to do. Yeah. Well, we're focusing a lot on the. Uh, line between you and Subway. What about on the other side? On the south or west side? Uh, you're talking over by the Chinese restaurant? Yep, yep. yep. Uh, that line literally is great. If you look at that white fence they have, I mean, they're pretty much, they kind of got to use our lot to a point. From what I can see, they got a grease trap, they got a dumpster there that has to be dumped. So I'm going to try to talk with him and see if we can iron that out so that I know when that happens so that I can, you know, kind of stay out of his way. I don't want to inconvenience him. He looks like he's, you know, sort of a nice guy. I've talked with him, you know, and obviously I want to be a good neighbor and try to work with him. So, you know, we're going to try to work that out amongst us. But that line literally goes slashed right, you know, into that parking lot. In fact, uh, Mr. Bell, the owner of the building, actually seen it. He passed away, but he actually has a second service over there. I guess at one time they had a vending cart on that side. Yeah. Look there, there's actually a whole setup, you know, for power for that. But I have no intentions of that. I'm, I'm just, you know, I just want to come in, buy clams, and get in and out on a daily basis pretty quick. You know, I'm going to do what I can to work with it, basically. So as I understand it, then, that there already is a barrier there. It probably already is on property you're considering leasing and, 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 and buying. Um, and, and the Chinese restaurant folks are actually using a portion of your property. Is that, a, is that right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he has the fence to kind of run his last ways partially, and then he has to sort of pick tables. And the, the, the fence is right literally three feet from this building. Um, <laughs> yeah, I assume well, everyone's. Uh, almost none of that came through. It got very broken up. Uh, yeah, Walter. If you could turn off the visual, yeah, if you turn off the visual, that usually helps with getting things clear. Sasha, how do I turn off the visual? I'm not very good at this. 
Uh, there should be like a camera button on the bottom left corner of the screen. There we go. All right, yeah, let's try that. Ready? Yep, let's try that now. Yeah, well, uh, basically he has a fence there that's divided into two pieces, but it's literally three feet off the end of his building. And like I said, he's, he's got three straps there and a dumpster that they access from, you know, our side of the parking lot to get at it, which, like I said, I will work with them, you know, on that particular matter, you know, and tell you, you know, I, once I know the schedule, obviously I can make it work. Okay, I understand that that's better then. All right, good. All right. If nobody has, does anyone have anything else? Then we're going to go over the fire. First thing I'd like to do is, is get one clarification, Max, and it has to do with something that, that you sent us. You, you said that you believe the MDOT banning of uh, tractor trailers or not allowing tractor trailers would also apply to planners bringing their boats in behind their, their pickups or, or vehicles. Is that really the case? So from what I understood when I talked with, um, oh, who was the one who signed this permit? Um, I think it was uh, Ryan Douglas. Yes. He said that essentially, yes, you, they can bring their car, but it's not like they can have a trailer or a boat attached onto the boat or onto the car, if that makes sense. That, that's what I was told through the phone call. But Walter's talked with them as well. I don't know if he had the same discussion from them? Um, I actually had the same discussion, but as you know, he played it hard to understand on the phone. He, uh, you know, we had some talk about it, but I, the way I took it, he said it was, you know, all right, and it wasn't the same, you know, because the tractor trailer is 53 feet long, just the box, and he said he didn't consider that, but Maybe I'm confused. Like I said, I had a very hard time talking to him on the phone. He's, he's got a very strong accent. Yeah, for those who aren't aware, the individual we're talking about has a very thick Scottish accent. <laughs> I'm seeing some head shakes already. <laughs> it was really difficult. That's something I could probably ask uh, through an email if he can give a clarification for that then. Right. He called me back and basically told me he was giving me a courtesy call that there was some concerns, but he didn't have a problem with what I was doing as far as the DOT, because I, I told him exactly what we planned on doing, and I didn't think it was an issue, but like I said, I did have a hard time understanding it completely on the phone. Okay, I think it's, that's an important point to get clarification on before couple of reasons. One, I don't know how reasonable it is to expect clamors to drop their boats off before they come to sell their, their clams. And if that is an expectation, they're probably going to be disappointed a lot of the time when they, when they don't do that. But the other part of it is the impact on traffic is much higher, you know, vehicle with a boat trail. Right? Basically two for one, less mobility, the odds of somebody getting stacked up back out onto Route 1, which is the safety concern, goes up dramatically. So that really needs some level of clarification. <clears throat> you know, you know, if, if I, I personally don't think that would ever happen. That's my opinion, just based on the fact that, I, you know, I've got, there's actually two locations here I couldn't take bitches up because the tree growth was so heavy, I, you couldn't see nothing. But I, I mean, I, been doing it for about 30 years and I, over on Jefferson Street, yeah, they got a problem there. I mean, I've seen it over there myself, you know, packed up, trucks coming, trying to back in and what have you. But most, if you look, all these locations, I put the circular driveway in, an entrance and an exit, and 
We're pretty diligent on moving these guys through fairly quick. It ain't like I stand around chit chatting with them, you know. Like, and in this particular law, it's you know they're actually going to be able to come in and, and be, be too wide if that's the end. You know, if everybody pulls into that low dog area, you're going to have you know just say you had three. From what I can see, you could have at least three not even out onto the road, and then you could have three more beside them as well. So, and I hope that never even happens, you know. Because, I, like I said, I try to roll them in and roll them out really fast. You know, I, the location in Brunswick is on the bath road there, and that's that's got a lot of traffic between there and Coach Warner. And we never have no issues there. I've never really had any issues at any of my locations, you know, as far as that. I was, you know, I was going to try to get something from each, maybe the police department in each location to say that, that you know, that I never had an issue, but it was kind of, I heard, I didn't really realize until yesterday that it was an issue. Other than talking with the DOT guy, you know, for what I could understand, I really, you know, it was very difficult to understand what he was saying a lot of it. He talked really fast and it was kind of hard to understand what he was saying. But I personally, you know, I give you my personal guarantee that that, you know, would not have it on my watch. And I totally intend to run this shop myself for a good long, long time to make sure everything's running the way it should be. So, I mean, you could put conditions on it, I guess. If you see it, you can pull my license. I mean, that's just confident, you know, I'm pretty confident that it's not going to happen. And I can also tell my harvesters as well that, you know, if you happen to come up there and you can't get in the yard to, you know, take a ride around the block, so to speak, or pull into urban and eat your gas and what have you, you know, well, they're right the tide, what I can say. You know, and they got a, see this, you know, fairly good spot over there. It wouldn't be very long for them to have to wait. I got a uh, question for you. I don't know if you want to get cars is a pretty common sense that you can't stop traffic on Route 1, you know. Sorry, Charlie, did you start to say Yeah, I did. I, I was just wondering, um, can all of these clamors, is it, do you sequence them, or could, like, five come at once, or do you have any plan, like, maybe instead of having them all bunch up, what, what if five or six of these people wanted to come at the same time? Do you, do you have any any sequencing plan for them so that doesn't happen? Or can they just come catch as catch can? Well, they pretty much come at will. And, you know, it's, it's, they don't all come in at one time. You know, you're getting your guys that come in at low water. You know, they only dig a appetite. Older guys, they come in earlier. You know, and then you get another run you know, where you get three or four will come in, you know, a couple hours after, and then you, you know, the, the big hard heavy hitters don't come in until three and a half, four hours after long. So it's not like they all come at one time. That's pretty rare. You know, I'm, my Machias location, I don't know if you can see that, the 13 Court Street, I'm literally beside the town office. I can pull up the that one if people would prefer uh, just seeing it the, this example that Walter's talking about I can pull it up very quickly yeah it's uh, actually six Court Street you know that's the smallest location we have there and I mean that's a pretty busy location as well I assume everyone can see that right yeah, I can see it all. The floor, you know, you can see the town office is literally right beside me, right to the right on this picture. And I got the hand and lumber directly behind me, and their crap closed out through. We've had no issues here at all. This is 1A here, Court Street. A lot of traffic here. And we don't have you know, any issues down there. But like I said, we're really pretty diligent about getting them in and getting them out fast. Can I ask a question? Sure. 
at the risk of getting a little bit too granular on this, uh, <clears throat> how many guys, for the sake of argument, how many guys would be coming through in a day, in a tide, whatever, and how much time you think per guy does it take to get them in and out? Maybe that would. I figure you're going to have, you're going to have probably this location here. I expect it's going to, you know, obviously, at in April, we're going to get half the guys over there. It ain't like I'm going to get every digger in town to come over to me. And that's say probably seven to ten guys a day, you know, coming in. And they're there for, you know, approximately ten minutes. Yeah. So it ain't, it ain't like a, you know, like a, a big stream of guys going to flow through there. In Machias, that that's our smallest location. And we literally see 30 guys a tide there. I mean, because the production is just so high. Yeah. I mean, we, we bought over 130 bushel up there today. Yeah. And I don't know what that happens. Yeah, a pretty fast pace, you might say. So I'm a little surprised at the head count you expect. Well, because the, the number of um, Commercial licenses now sells every year, I think. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, you, you sell over 100 down there, I do believe, but yep. I ain't going to get them all. You got, you you know, you got, uh, well, is it, uh, one of the Delano's here, the older fellow, I can't think of his first name, buy in. And you got Abdi and April buy in. You know, I, yeah, I'm buying and cushion as well, which. Some guys, you know, sell over there. They're pretty routine over there. So I mean, I don't, I don't see more than, you know, on a, on a good big tide day, you might see 10, 12. Um, I'm going to go to Max for a minute. Max, in your discussions with the three chiefs, Flash, Smelter, and Booker, did they have any recommendations on? Uh, they're, they're clear on their concerns. Right. Do they have any specific recommendations on how they can send Jim, actually, just before I answer that, do you mind if I ask a point of clarification to uh, Scott? Sure. Uh, Scott, you said it takes 10 minutes. Is that 10 minutes for each person or 10 minutes total for this 7 to 10 crowd? Per guy. Oh, that's per person. Per person. And okay. when I say 7 to 10, I'm talking about 7 to 10 trucks. You might have a couple of guys per truck. Most okay. guys park and they're out. So I'm, I'm, I'm re really referring to, you know, trucks coming through. You know, and it could get, you know, you might get as high as 15, but I don't think you'd see much more than that. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, so, Jim, to your question, the three chiefs making a recommendation. Um, they pretty much, I mean, I quickly asked uh, Derek Booker before tonight's meeting if he wanted to sit in, and he, he said no, unless, unless the planning board wants a time for the chiefs to actually come in later to talk about this or even ask via email or cell phone. You know, we, we just wanted to let everyone know of our concerns. I think when I did quickly ask Derek about it, I guess it was just, is there a written plan or something that I think is what they're kind of looking for? Like something in writing that just says, this is how we're going to make sure this isn't going to overflow. I, th I think Johnny was actually addressing that a bit earlier anyways, that if a huge crowd comes in at one moment, right. how is that going to be addressed pretty much? Yeah. So that was pretty much, I think that was pretty much what all three chiefs said through this letter. So, Walter, other than, than you're going out and actually policing it, which is which means you'd be trying to do two things at once, which you're trying to get. So, let's set this, this scenario. You've got a parking lot full of vehicles, little without trailers on them, and it's starting to back up on the roof one. You're trying to process them as quickly as you can, but you're going to go out and play traffic on How is that? really going to work. 
Well, I, you know, I hope to have a pretty regular crew, you know, that's going to be selling to me. And, you know, I see these guys on a daily basis. And obviously, you know, I want to make it quite clear to them that if you can't get in, you just keep rolling. You know, they can go up to the next light and go back down around the hole in the box, so to speak, there, and buy themselves some time, you know, in that respect. And I definitely, you know, like I said, that's a big parking lot. I, I don't believe you'd ever see that. I, I, I give you my personal guarantee that wasn't going to happen. I, I don't think it will. It's from past experience. Max, is it possible for us to, to require signage right there at the, along with the movie shellfish sign? Um, no queuing on Route 1, no blocking traffic on Route 1, something to that effect to make it clear that, that if you can't get into the lock, you keep on rolling? Yes. It's very distracting. I mean, there's already so many signs along that stretch of Route 1. I, I think that's going to add to the clutter. I don't know if anyone's going to really notice something like that. We'll have to ask Dunkin' Donuts to do the same thing. <laughs> well, when they when they come in for an expansion, we can get yeah. up there, but unfortunately, they decided to do that before this was a th ordinance was a thing. Um, Jim, to answer your question, yes, that can be a condition, um, since one of the review criteria is for safe and adequate vehicle and pedestrian access and circulation. And I did check with MMA about this type of thing, and they said, as long as the condition ties to the the use of the lot, then it is acceptable. I think we should keep that as a, if it turns out to be a problem, we can do that. But to suggest that at the beginning, when we had pretty 30 years of um, history here, that this is not, it's very unlikely this, this be an issue. Why add more clutter to uh, our Route 1? I mean, we can always we can always request signs later if it turns out there's a problem. I so would... I have a alternate suggestion. Let's put the sign on the uh, refrigeration unit on the lo on loading dock, loading dock, where they're going to pull up. It, it, it'll just be a visual reminder. It's not on the road, but it's there as a clear instruction to everybody pulling in. That, that if they can't get into the lot, they better circle around. They can't keep up on the one. That Jim. way we're not cluttering, but it is it is there. We've done something to make sure, other than Walter's personal guarantee, which, which, which I take the spirit which is given, um, at least there's something else that we've done to, to ensure that the, the traffic back up doesn't uh, I think that's a great idea, personally. Jim, just for a point of clarification, uh, for the sign that you're saying should go on that storage are you talking about the one saying if it's clogged up move along or are you saying the moody sign uh original moody seafood sign no no the the, the what to do with the traffic queues up yeah the moody, moody, moody seafood goes out in the road where it's already been approved but then the the, the instruction sign for, for people coming in you know if the parking lot is full keep on moving you don't back up onto the one um They'll see that as they're offloading every time they come in, and that should be enough of a reminder along with Walter on the one that you can go. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that would be great because that, I kind of do have, you know, uh, I put up like a bulletin board, uh, you know, on that, on the face of that cooler where the loading dock is, where it's right in their face, you know, and I could have a nice little sign made up, you know, just reminding everybody that. You know, that's not, you know, that's not going to work at all. And I think it would be a good reminder, like, you know, like I said, I don't think, you know, most, you know, most harvesters, they say they can't pull in, they're going to, they're going to roll by. I, I just can't see somebody walking through one. That's like taking your life in your own hands there. Yeah, that is probably the busiest traffic area in town, so. And along with, the, along with all of the the uh, public safety equipment next door. Yeah, yeah. You got you know you got urban traffic, and I see them concrete trucks. They're rolling through there. You know the big trucks. So, I, you know I, I, I definitely you know see your concerns, but I 
I'll do everything I possibly can to make that work. I'll, you know, like you said, I think that's a great idea. And I said, I think, you know, the guys will, the guys will follow the rules. You know, like I said, we can get them in and out. And I can also, I was almost thinking, maybe I should strike the parking lot, you know, with some arrows in and out, put an entrance and an exit sign on both ends, and I could, I could actually make that like two lanes coming in and out so that the guys can kind of know, you know, that you can start doubling up when things are looking like it's getting backed up. You know, you could have them too wide in there. There's all kinds of room for that. I think, yeah, I think that's, that's an excellent idea that, that's, yeah, showing folks where they should drive, how they should park would, would, would certainly help. Yeah. Um, any exit and entrance, because I can see that that's not really the natural traffic flow folks coming up off the boat ramps be coming that way um, for those that use the skills. Right. All right. So, so I have a handful of items that we would probably want to attach to, to any of Google. Let me just run through and see if anybody has any more additions. Um, I believe we should show request on the on the plan that the dedicated parking is is shown for the apartment tenants. That would go hand in hand with the striping and the exit and entrance signs to show that the traffic flow in and out and in, in the line matters as they Show the barriers, Walter? I, I, I found in the Brunswick location, that's actually a fish market and a takeout, and we buy Clint's in. <laughs> so, you know, and it has a drive through So, you know, if it was ever going to be a problem, it wouldn't be at that location. But I did find that if you do not lay it out in solid black and white, the parking and the flow, you're going to have problems. I mean, I've had people pull right up and take out a window and jump out to go in and eat food, you know what I mean, until I actually put, put arrows down in stripes and what have you. So, so I think doing that also addresses the chief's concern because you're going to have a more controlled traffic flow and probably be able to handle more traffic if you do that. Um, the signage on the cooler reminding all of, all of your suppliers of stay off of one completely into the parking lot, not to not to do anything to block the one at all. And then I actually need to get clarification of whether or not parking trailers or trailers And I don't think it makes a difference to the planning board, which it is, but we need to know. So that I'll just do the right thing if 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 the and uh, where they met boat trailers as well as tractor trailers, then that's going to impact the sign that he's got to put up and what he tells his, his suppliers and clients. Okay. Do you want to have anything else in terms of the conditions? Um, I think with the bundles, I don't know if with the package bundles that went out, but there was the separate letter from the fire chief that went over section 712, I believe. The emergency access and the sufficient water. I think that was in that. If not, then maybe that document was just, just not put there. And I think I talked to Scott about this already, but uh, essentially, the fire chief is recommending that a lockbox be on the site just for emergency access. Which I would agree to as well. That's not a problem. So that would just be a condition. So, so subject to these conditions, well, I have a, a motion. Well. So, just to be, can you go through those conditions again, Jim? That the 
site plan be updated to show the dedicated parking for the tenants and the traffic flow, entrance, exit, striping to show the traffic flow for the suppliers. The signage on the cooler, reminding everyone of, of no queuing up on Route 1 to, to, to keep Route 1 clear. I'll leave the wording of that to uh, Walter. Showing the, I didn't, I don't think I got to this one, the eight foot offset and the barriers by, by subway, just to show the requirement for the barriers and, and exactly how that would work with the striping for the parking lot and the parking spaces and everything else, just to have a comprehensive plan of, of what's going to happen in that parking lot. Was that required, the, the barriers? I mean, it's a, a good thing to do, but is that, that's not a plan, uh, ordinance requirement, is it? And it's a good thing for him to manage the lot that way, but is I don't think that's part of our ordinance requirements to have a physical barrier, right? It's not a required standard, but it goes back to what uh, that review criteria item I said later, where the proposal will provide for safe and adequate vehicle and pedestrian access and circulation and development. So those are the types of conditions that can be made at this time that should address that concern. Without that, I, I could see if the parking lot cut full, people pulling into the subway parking lot, you know, it's sort of used as a common parking lot. I think it did, it behooves us to, to separate the two as well as already plans but to formalize the, the plans to do that. I guess my point is that if this business changes down the line, um, does this leave the next owner of the property some leeway to do something different on that border? I mean, who knows what, and, and, you know, this is a permanent requirement. It definitely makes sense for this project to have something there and to have the eight foot setback anyway for the, parking um, for the apartment units, but, um, um, you know, not every business along with one has got a physical barrier between one office and the next. <coughs> Realty office, and a lot of them don't have a physical barrier. I'm just wondering why we, we're, I think you should put it on the site plan, but our, why do we have to require it? Okay. He's going to do it, but why do we have to require it? Well, my position on that, Barbara, is is if it's planned to be done, it should be on the site plan. The site plan should be all inclusive. We've said it's going to be done, or Walter okay. said it's going to be done. In that case, put it on the site plan. I agree. Okay. I'm just saying some people couldn't go ahead and do all this at once in the starting of the business. This guy's been in business for a while, but for there's another business just starting out, it might be you know, asking a lot a big expense to start your business. So that's why I bring it up. Walter, do you have any issues with us having this requirement on, the, on anything that might be approved? No, 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 no. I think everything's, you know, going in the right direction. And, you know, I think if, you know, for this particular project, I think that parking lot should be closed off just to, mitigate any traffic jams that we might see. Just what time I've been down there working on the interior, I had my truck, just my pickup truck, backed up to the double doors there, and then the sign post is like five feet off the nose of your truck, and traffic was coming through, and literally going on the outside of the sign post, on the grass to go around in the parking lot. It's like, whoa, you know, that ain't gonna be work at all. So I, I think for this particular project, everything, you know, the lockbox, I think the signage on the pool is a great idea. I think striping it, you know, the entrances and exits, I, you know, I think you, know, you got to lay it right out pretty solid. But I, I, I say, you know, on a case-by-case -case basis, I'd say this is the best case for this particular project. Okay. Good. Max, I think the other one we had was the lockbox on site. By, by Chief Smeltzer, and then there's a point of clarification 
and that has to do with the tractor trailers and boat trailers. Okay. And and for the, oh, go ahead. Was someone about to speak? I was just going to ask: Is it typical for the um, fire station to have a lockbox to apartments? Um, so lockbox too. The lock boxes to the uh, uh, to the buying station, well, to the building itself, actually, the first floor. Because Walter, if I under if I understood the layout correctly from the application, it's going to be the far right, and then the top part of the building are going to be apartments, right? There's going to be that whole left section that's going to be uh, for right. the business, correct? Yeah. So basically, I'm going to use this uh, <laughs> a garage door there that day. I'll, I'll use that to store, you know, any clam baskets and pallets that I might have to use, you know, as the clams are coming in. I'll, I'll use that as a, I'll put it in desk in that area, so that will be where I'll actually write their invoices and, you know, give them a check. But, yes, the car meant to be separate from that particular piece, per se. Okay. And I, I intend to have the bottom apartment is actually going to be for one of my employees to stay there on site and to kind of keep an eye on things for me. So subject to these conditions, do I have a motion? So I... I meant to actually talk about this at the June meeting, but we haven't had a quorum since. So when it comes to site map revisions, we do need to have the site map actually revised and complete, and then you can vote on the whole measure. But we can certainly still do a motion to be fine with everything now, and then by the next meeting, we can have the document that's ready for the quote-unquote final approval and then signatures. So if you're saying the site plan needs to be amended then is that what i'm getting from all this jim that's what that's what you're getting from me yeah i'd like to see the site plan amended to show everything we've just discussed so there's no question about what it is we're agreeing to what that needs to happen and so long as that's done then, then it would be approved but i understand what you're saying we don't have anything in front of us that we can formally sign off on and approve until that, that's actually been done. Right. And this is because of a case that has happened very somewhat recently where it was presented on the site plan, but then there was some confusion about what, what wasn't on there. And then when I talked with the attorneys about it, it was something that shouldn't have been approved, but it's already a moot point because of what's happened in June. But that was something that they just gave a little warning about going forward of if you're meant if you're amending the site plan, even for something like the the barrels, that's something where we just need to say amend this and then we can do the final sign off next meeting, which is two weeks from now. So that should be a quick ten minute thing if the site plan's amended. So, so, so there's not a, a motion per se, Max, or how do we proceed? Um, it would just be the board, I guess, recognizing those conditions and site plan changes, and then that'll be on the final plan, and then that will be approved next meeting. So it's the board just to, just in taking a consensus of the board, we all agree that, that these are, the, are, this is what we'd like to see on the revise submittal of the site plan next week next next meeting correct so it's just for if i'm getting this correct lockbox will be on the site that's going to be a condition the site plan will be updated to address the tenants and when they're going to be parking um i guess it's already on there but i guess make it more clear that there's going to be a barrier that will divide the subway lot and the project lot and then a condition is just going to be the sign on the cooler regarding the congestion. <clears throat> Question, Max? Yep. When you say barrier, that's open to a little bit of interpretation. The MA, MAA, one of their conditions of approval is 
you should state conditions clearly in the decision and clearly note conditions of any approval plan. So okay. do you think the language is focused enough to, you know, you could put a barrier of junk cars or whatever, so. That's more on the board's column how specific you want to be on yeah, that. Well, I'm, I'm just, this is from the I, MMA. I know, this is from lawyers. So I, I just I don't want to get into dangerous ground where it, things can be misconstrued. <laughs> I mean, funny enough, we there is going to be an application later tonight about uh, trees versus fences. So you could certainly, I mean, barrels seems to be the idea for what's going to be. Right. No, so I, you I, can say barrels if you want. I, again, I, I leave it to how specific the board wants the condition to be. I, I mean, I'm not trying to be nitpicky. I'm just saying this is what lawyers from the MMA no, I, state. No, I, I know what you're saying, but I'm saying I don't actually have that authority to say what's in it. That's going to be the planning board's decision. Okay, so... Th that's all I'm trying to get across. Okay. I, I'm just trying to figure out what... So, however the language well, Walter, is... Walter, we'll leave it to you on the revised site plan to show us barriers that you think will meet with our approval. Okay. And, and, it, and it's, of course, it, it is a vehicle, vehicular barrier we're talking about because we're trying to stop that. Right. So I will, I'll approve it in, based on what we just talked about. In except Max, except Max, excuse me, Barbara, Max missed one significant item and that's the, all of the exit and entrance oh. um, asphalt painting and the, and the uh, showing that the lanes for the traffic flow in the parking lot. That's also a significant item we need on the uh, revised site. And I'll take your, your agreement, Barbara. <laughs> well, I didn't I guess we don't have to vote today, but it sounds like, I mean, is anybody um, not going, anybody have any, um, not going to approve this project in two weeks? Or any remaining questions? Sarah, Jeff, we good with all this? Yep. Yes, I would. <laughs> you've got some work to do to get that back in front of us within the next couple of weeks, and I'll let you coordinate that with Max. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, I'll get that ready over to him as soon as possible so you can all look it over. And appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Marshall, I think you're up next. Application number two. <laughs> yeah, for, for the um, uh, 2818 Atlantic Highway. Yes. 2818. This is the, the final version of what we looked at on a preliminary basis a couple of months ago. Yep. Yeah. So, want to give us a? Let me. I'm sorry. I'm going to back up. Max, mm -hmm. should we be doing anything with the planning board with your findings of fact or other documents before we go into a presentation of the application by the applicant? So that's something we can actually talk about later if there's some time. That's that's a document that we really should have rather than just planner summary. There should be a more official document beyond that summary and uh, uh, the minutes. So that's, I think we talked about this back in April, but that's just something we need to sort of iron out a bit more. But we can talk about that later. Because I do like the documents that you put together. It's just now figuring out how we work them into our way of working. So typically for the findings of facts and conclusion of law, that's when you do want to actually approve the application and you're just running through everything and making sure you actually have the facts of the application down so that it's someone was to look at it, they can actually see it right there as opposed to scattered in the minutes. Makes complete sense. Marshall? Next topic. All right, yeah, so... Uh, Matt Moody is proposing to um, construct another 60 foot by 120 foot uh, storage facility at uh, this location. It'd be very similar to the existing 
uh, sort of building, and it'll be for uh, RVs and boats to be stored there. And then there'll be 10 uh, self-storage units as well. Is anything significant change from the previous uh, preliminary plan? Um, <coughs> not anything too significant. We're just refining our, our design to um, make sure it was properly graded in drainage, uh, the drain well and everything like that. Yeah, those were the principal changes that the updates I think that I saw. And we shifted the, um, the proposed location at, um, a bit to the west, to the left, um, yeah, to the west, to uh, decrease the amount of the previous area that we created uh, by the gravel that's proposed. So the area between the self-storage pods and the new building is not as previous. That's correct. It'll, it'll, yeah, it'll just remain grass. Any other board members have any questions on this? We went over it pretty completely last time. Uh, just, Jim, if I can jump in. Yeah, um, I did get the fire chief to check it out because that was something I said I was going to do during the preliminary and uh, he said he's able to get his truck through and around the property without without any issues. Good. At least Good with Housing brought that up as well. Yeah. How it's proposed. And again, he gave me a letter giving his recommendations. Um, nothing's needed on the water supply, but does recommend a lockbox for the site. Just a reminder, that's just a recommendation. The board can uh, accept that recommendation and have a lockbox as a condition, or you can choose not to. It's up to the board. Sorry, Max, I didn't catch the, all that today again. So, Fire Chief gave me a letter about uh, his recommendation for Section 7.12. Uh, the water supply on the site's fine for this proposal and he is recommending a lockbox for the site and I didn't say this in the last one but just the rec just to uh, clarify with the planning board it is a recommendation from the fire chief so the board can choose to accept that recommendation and have the lockbox as a condition or you can choose to waive the request or recommendation it's a board decision Uh, Marshall, do you think Mr. Moody would have any objections to having a lockbox on the property? Uh, Matt's actually uh, in the audience tonight, too. <laughs> sorry, I'm oh, sorry. Marshall? Um, I haven't had any discussions about having a lockbox or not with him, um, so I'm not sure on that one. Uh, Sorry for cutting you off there. Uh, Matt's actually in the audience tonight. <laughs> yeah. Matt, do you have yeah, any? I'm fine with that. Yeah, I can, uh, I'll add that to the front of the office building there. Yeah, I think that's actually where the chief was suggesting, since right. that's a more central spot. Correct. Yeah, so Sounds good. Matt's given the thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. Donnie, did you start to ask something before? Or? Oh, just, I'm just curious. So you're going to store RVs, boats, and you're going to have bins? Is that, is that the, well, I'm just a little confused. What's the, is, is that the gist of what you want to do at SMEAN? Yeah, just, well, at, at, at same as I'm doing cur currently, um, it's just an open building, open floor plan. Right. Um, and I have uh, uh, six lane lines painted in there. Right. And uh, right, boats, cars, and uh, RVs. I, I always ask this question: Can those vehicles? Do they drip anything? Oils? Anything like that that can somehow get into? Or if you wash them or rinse them off? Is there any concern? 
uh, there's no that. water on the property. Um, there, there's nothing, and, okay. And, and, so, and, and they can't do anything. Um, and we do put uh, oil to over pads. Uh, underneath, the, yeah, okay, yeah, good idea, or, excellent. Or okay. I think that's got a motor, yep. per se, like an outboard or yep. an outboard motor. Excellent. Um, that was my only question. Right, Thank you. I think Barbara had a question. Question? Um, I apologize. I meant to look this up today and I uh, didn't have time, but maybe Max can uh, address this. But the uh, lighting that's proposed, it doesn't look like it's um, they're dark sky fixtures. They seem to go, the lighting goes out as well as down. Um, is there any problem with switching them to changing the light fixtures so that they primarily down. I, I believe the lighting, uh, what we, we're suggesting is on the back uh, of the office building, uh, facing to the north to light up the um, access to the storage pods. Um, so it wouldn't be facing the Route 1 uh, corridor. Um, all, all the lighting that will be going uh, the door. Barbara, did you hear that? The, actual, the elevations don't show the. Uh, so on the big buildings, there's no lighting? No, all? there is not. So these light fixtures are just to go on the small existing building? Uh, uh, right so on the back. Right, uh, right on the back of that one, facing to the north, because those storage pods are going to be lined up. Uh, basically, from the back of that small office building to the north. And uh, everyone on Zoom could hear Matt, correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. I just didn't know. Sometimes people can hear, sometimes people can't. <laughs> so, Barbara, does that answer your question, or...? Two bulbs, two great pictures on that entire property. That's, you know, if you were to add more, you're likely to go get the same type of fixture and put them around different places. Um, and I, that's my only uh, critique about the type of uh, light fixture is that it's going out as well as is down the way it's uh, designed. I mean, there's specifically commercial light fixtures that are for dark sky compliance, which I thought we had in our ordinance, Max. Is that the case? Or? Um, there are lighting standards. Um, light level at lot lines shall not exceed 0 0.5 foot candles measured at ground level. Maximum height of freestanding light shall be the same as principal buildings. All lights shall be shield. All lights shall have shielding to provide a beam cutoff at no more than 75 degrees above nadar. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the one. This okay. So you just. So I'm looking at the cut sheet for the lighting picture, and it's tough to figure out exactly how far up that, that light will go. But. <clears throat> So, uh, Barbara, just to be clear, you just want to make sure that the lights comply with, this is section 7.7.1.3, all lights shall have shielding to provide a beam cutoff at no more than 75 degrees. That's what you want to be sure about? Yes. Okay. Yep. Yep. I'm getting the thumbs up here. Yeah, we'll, we'll yep. that. <coughs> Two conditions, as I understand it. One is the uh, addition of a lockbox yep. at the agreed location, and that the lighting 
on the existing building that would be added to the existing building to comply with the uh, standards. Anything else, anyone? Uh, can I just ask you a question, just for clarification? Um, we didn't need a stormwater management. I know there's a um, proportion or percentage of the developable lot. Can you, can you just tell me what that ended up being? Um, and why we don't store management plan. Sure. I don't so, um, if you have over an acre of your area, yeah, um, you need a stormwater permit from DEP. But um, a portion of the impervious area for this lot was uh, in existence but prior to 2005 when stormwater uh, management law was put into place. So if you subtract that out of our total impervious area, we're actually below an acre of impervious area that's going to have been put into place after 2005, if that makes sense. And what year was that, that that change happened? Uh, so, so more a law came into effect in 2005. So this building was partially developed, I mean, the property was partially developed before 2005, so it's not taking yes. consideration for Water Correct. Correct. Well, it's just, just the, the part that was previously developed is not considered. It's only new developments over an acre that have to have a stormwater management plan. How should we start from? Yeah, if, if you develop over an acre after 2005, then you need a stormwater. So we're, we're very close to that, but we did not exceed it. And it doesn't need a that was something, something we took you to task for a little bit in a previous meeting. You were right on the edge. And I think that might be one reason why you move things a little bit to the west or north. Exactly. Yeah. I think before it was slightly over, so that's why we adjusted it to make sure we were under that acre threshold. And uh, I'm sorry if I'm jumping in. Uh, just for clarity, are you saying just a stormwater permit or a stormwater permit by rule? That's one more current by rule. Okay. Just wanted that clarity. What does that mean, Max? What you just said? Uh, I believe that, I mean, maybe I got it wrong, but I, because there was this whole discussion when we had a uh, Seacott trucking back in March about one acre requiring a permit by rule, whereas a different acre would be uh, a more thorough stormwater plan uh, that yeah and I'm okay so I'm not crazy I'm seeing some head nods there <laughs> um, yeah they just have a longer re review period for a full stormwater permit than they do the permit by rule is basically more requirements more thorough review it's, it's like a, it's a different uh, team within the department yeah so that's why I was just asking for that clarity Um, what was the purpose of including the soil survey data in the application? I may have missed that, but just like that the, the ground that is there is not already very permeable to water. Is there a reason behind including that information or is that required? Or? I believe that might be a requirement of the ordinance okay. to include that data. Yeah, I'll pull that up. I don't remember the specific section, but that's why I'm here. Section eight point six is about soils. Uh, it just wanted to be sure that it was soil that was suitable for this type of development. Okay. I assume that's what you're talking about. Okay. Yep. Anything else? I just have one thought just came to me. You said there's no water on the, there's no water at all on that site? There was no well. No. There's no well or nothing? And again, my mind kind of does funny things, but let's just say at 1 a.m. a vehicle catches fire. So the, a fire truck would have to go through that lane and put it out? I mean, is there fire alarms or anything like that for safety reasons that would alert? 
the, 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 the town? No, 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 no. The, 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 I mean, it's one open building. Right. So that they, there's with multiple doors um, from access to both ends to get into the uh, whatever store in there. So that they could, there'd be easy, there'd be reasonable access oh, yes. for an emergency oh, vehicle. Yeah, no, okay, just, all right. I just, there's, there's two 20 foot. Okay. Each end, so, but it was entered stores. So with that, I uh, hear a motion to approve subject to the two conditions we've stated, one being the additional lockbox and the relocation, and the second one being that the two lighting fixtures comply with the town requirements. So moved. Second. Okay. I'll second it. County seconding. Seconding it. All in favor, one by one. Johnny? Y yay. Okay. Uh, I or yay? <laughs> Aye. Good. Aye. 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 I go by the old English standards. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll work with uh, Pat and Garth Andorski, get the conditions on the plan, and then uh, get the planning board signatures. I prefer the uh, British parliamentary system. That's good. Good. Okay. Good luck. I'm glad your business is working out for you. Thank you. Great. Good work. All right, Max, where do we go next? Now it is a, an amendment for the site plan that was approved last year at 30 Mank Town Road. And uh, yeah, I think we have time. Let's set it, and I believe that the folks are there in the audience. So let's yes, the applicant Janice around. is in the audience. Um, if you could come up to the podium, then I can. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Excellent. Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, I submitted my plan a couple years ago for an addition to my gymnastic facility. And at the time, um, we had a bit of a problem um, at the border of our property, my property and my neighbor's property. And we asked for an abatement, which the Vanna's agreed to at the time um, because my um, the setback was off. I, I don't know exactly how much, but it was agreed to and we thought we were done at that point. But um, then the town told me that I had to have an actual land exchange. And so um, I had Dusty Star put up a plan and offered the Vannas a land exchange of a little bit more acreage than what I would be getting. And um, at that point, the Vannas were not in agreement of that. So that's where we're at with the property line. So um, at that point, part of the agreement of the abatement was to put up a six foot stockade fence and at that point, since things were going forward at that time, it wasn't quite a problem. But I find at this time, since the project has been delayed, um, it's costing more money to put the building up and the budget is a little tight. 
And so what I wanted to know is instead of putting up the fence, could I put up trees? And so that was my question. Steal the mic. So Max, thank you, thank you for that explanation. Um, Max, if the land exchange didn't happen, how did the building construction go forward? So that's the other, well the addition hasn't been completed yet. Right? No, it hasn't been completed. And the building, I had to move over instead of a straight build onto my building, I had to move the building over eight feet and two inches to make the setback requirements, which so we this, did. So this is 30 feet off the off Yes, correct. yeah, okay. correct. So we made the adjustments, so we're, we're making the setback. And so what I wanted to know is, can I plant trees? Because I think the trees are going to be a little bit more within budget than putting up the stockade fence. So just as a clarification, um, this isn't about whether or not the last uh, application last year is acceptable. This is more about amending that one condition to go from fence to a tree buffer instead. That that's really what the point of the application is. What was um, what was the reasoning or context behind requiring the fence buffer? I believe it was something requested by the neighbors who are actually in the audience tonight, um, and I don't know when we want to get to the citizens or butters comments, Jim, Sarah, anyone? Let's, let's, let's first see if there are any other questions for, for is it Janice? Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. For Janice, from any of the board members before we, we go to the panels. Are we, Max, will we sense any kind of site plan or anything? I don't remember, I, I don't see anything. I know I sent an email. There is a finding of fact, and there's, yeah, about, there's it was kind of a safe plan. It was maybe two or three pages. Yeah. It, it, Does it show how long or how many trees or how what length of fence we were replacing the replacing with what trees and it, that it, kind of thing? It's a very thin line on that site plan, but essentially it would be going all along the uh, property line from uh, just that right corner with the vanas, like. It would be a tree buffer from that corner all the way down to where the tree line currently is. Yep, Jim's got it right there. Yep. Again, it's a very thin line that's on there, if I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was all out of proportion, those lines that were there. So. Yeah. But, but it, it runs the whole length of, of that lot line. Is that correct, Max? Well, that would be the question for James. Yeah, um, yes. Yeah. It looked from where you held up, Jim, that the trees would be right up against the corner of the building. No, uh, that's that. That's the what's out of proportion because the, the building is 30 feet. So I believe the trees are 30 feet off that. It's it's yes. this, this particular plan doesn't show it very well. Is my understanding. Do you know how long the run of trees would be, or the run of fence would be? Um, do you know how many feet you're trying to cover? I'd have to measure that, but a, a guesstimate would be probably, I would say about 100 feet. If the building, if the building size is, any, is anything to scale, it looks like it's more 150 to 175 feet. Excuse me? It's just, it's just the hotel the there's, there's okay. scale on this. So, so I would think it is 100 to 150, somewhere in that range. Right. So well, what I would like... It's not really, it's not really uh, if, if the point of the uh, buffer, the barrier, was uh, visual privacy, the trees, usually that means shrubs or um, evergreens, you know, so you have stuff lower down. That's right. So, um, you know, trees is, you know, when they say trees as a, as a buffer, it's usually kind of like a forest, foresty kind of strip, not a line of trees, because um, they're going to 
sure they're going to be low and bushy while they're young, but they're going to get tall and leggy. Um, so, you know, it, it kind of depends on what we're trying to do here. Uh, and then as I understand it, the current plan too is, I guess on the Vanna side of the property would be the freeze, and that would be the eight foot setback, and then there's going to be a drive yes. on that side to give access to the parking lot in the back, so there's, right. there's only that narrow eight, eight feet available for the planter. That's in the green bar, but there's, that's not the I'm sorry if I'm joining in and this is now off topic. Uh, I did a quick rough estimate in the back for um, the uh, measurements for how long this uh, tree line might be. I think it might be 2, 225. I don't know if that. The back, the back line is 225. 225 feet is what the banners are saying in That's the audience. She's going to the woods to be about 175. So, 175 for the, for the fence. is the estimate that the cost more for trees than the fence. Okay. Well, and, so, and that's kind of what I wanted to determine. I wanted to do the research with trees, and I want to do the research with the fence, and to see which one was more feasible. And I'm going with, I'd like to go with the, the more economical. So I'm sorry that I jumped in with that. I don't know if I cut off a good point. No, no, that's, that's fine, Max. Does anyone, before we go, go to the van, does any, do any of the other board members have questions or chats? I, oh, not, um, I don't know that it's a question for, for Janice, but just a, a comment that it's um, not having been here for the initial approval, it's hard to understand, um, yeah, without knowing what the intention was behind the barrier to, to make an, uh, at this point, to make a determination about whether trees are sufficient. So I think that's the part that's missing, but hopefully we'll get to that. Yeah, okay. I, I think the banners will okay. probably explain All right. that. <laughs> Let's go, let's then go to the to the banners and hear their, what, what their thoughts are on the situation. All right, when she originally built the first part of the building, we didn't have any problem with anything. We were promised a fence and trees. Wait, hold on, hold on, I'm sorry, we can't. Yeah. Yeah. Janice, do you mind just giving them a podium? Electronics. And, and for the benefit of Susan, who's taking the notes, could you please tell us who you are? I'm Richard Vanna, Jr. I'm the neighbor. I live on 46 Manktown Road, and my wife is Linda Vanna. Are we good? You all set? Yeah, go okay. ahead. Okay, yeah. I just want to make sure you can hear me. So when the original project was first built, we were promised a fence, trees, either or, um, and, and that was in 2017, and, and we got neither. So in the second one, we were approached by her to, for an addition to the, to the original building. Um, we signed the abatement so that she could build the original building the way she wanted to build it, and then she wanted some property, which I wasn't willing to give. I wanted to keep my back line as straight as possible, and I'd been there for 30-plus years and you know, just wanted to keep my back line. And then she told me she'd do the fence, and we made sure this time that the fence is in the plan, because last time it was just in the minutes. This time it's in the plan. So there's going to be a parking lot beyond the, the new building, which we, didn't know about. which we didn't know about, but that's fine. She's just extending her parking lot, and, in, and she's going to have cars turning around and coming up through at the back of our line, coming out the one way and going in the other. doesn't matter which way they go. There's still cars, and there's still dust, and there's still lights. And the original, she has a lot of little children down there, which is fine. You know, run your business the way you want to. But I have also have a, a bedroom sliding window in the back. When I come out of the bathroom and into my bedroom, I'm looking right directly at the building with full of children. Obviously, I have to keep my shade shut all the time. So we wanted privacy. We wanted some privacy from a business in our backyard. And trees aren't going to cut it because we know we won't get what we want for trees. We want a six-foot stockade fence like we were promised. That's all I have to say. Do you have any questions for me? Sarah, do, are you, because you were asking about the context earlier. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that's, that's, um, that's helpful. Uh, yeah, that's helpful context. I think, you know, it's, it's not like, I, 
I haven't, this seemed, it, it would probably be most ideal to go back and look at what the actual uh, agreement was, right? Um, so uh, maybe that makes sense to do. And then I have like a broader process question about like um, what types of conditions the planning board can put into agreements and, you know, what is our role from the perspective of en enforcement, right? So it's uh, the fact that the fence is not there and was in the agreement uh, doesn't necessarily seem like so. so I, I'm confused. It was only about in our, the minutes. Right. No, that makes sense. And put it in the plan. So it was discussed but not made a. Because we didn't say anything the first time she built the building. We were fine. We said it. We, it was a verbal right. thing that she put a fence up and put a row of trees with it, honestly. Both. When she came and asked for the second property, the second building put on, I specifically asked her, I said, well, where is my fence from the first time or my trees? She said, I ran out of money. I said, then how are you to tell us that you're not going to run out of money the second time? I need this put in the in the plan so that I get my, my fence. Mm -hmm. Because that's what we were promised the first time to get some sort of buffer. Didn't get it. So we're going to make sure that it comes this time because it's not fair to us. Mm -hmm. No, that, make, that makes sense. And to answer your procedural question yeah. on the conditions. So the fir very first one that was done in 2017 as it was just noted, it was only in the minutes. Right. So because it wasn't in the written agreement for the actual site plan, which is why I was talking about that earlier with um, uh, Moody Seafood, that was something that just had to be amended because we need to make sure it's all actually written on the site plan. Right. Uh, and so in the most recent one that happened last year, when the buffer came up and the screening came up, the buffer and screening are requirements on the planning board uh, standards. It's like the first one, actually. Okay. Um, usually, people ask that to be waived to whenever there is no vegetation that's already there. Okay. But in this case, uh, the fence can always be an alternative to trees, okay. which is why they requested a fence specifically. Okay. Thank you. And that would just be built like after the construction is done. Okay. Quick question for you. Sure. So you, the six-foot fence is what you want, and that that's your bottom line. Yes. You yes. So th there's nothing in the way of a trees that that ju it just doesn't do the right thing to what you agree it's with? It's not going to work for what we want, you know, the lights and being blocked half of the building and so on and so forth. I and see. like you said, how do you know what trees you get? I know somebody yeah. said shrubs and smaller smaller things. I mean, the, sh the trees will have to grow. I, I believe it was Barbara. If you buy a six-foot arb and plant 175 feet of them or 200 feet of them, it's going to cost you more fence anyway. Well, the trees and you can see through them I probably when you go through. So the Barbara, lights will run right through them. Barbara was about to talk. Go ahead, Barbara. I have a, I have a question um, on the site plan that I pulled up from an old, your old me, email. Um, Max, I assume I'm looking at the right one. There's the white building. There's a 30, 30 foot red square. Probably. And 2,663 square foot, I think that yep. means the parking lot yep. behind? Is that the is that the site plan we're looking at? Yes. 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 Okay, what's the orange line that goes from the word access all the way to the uh, parking? What does that, that orange line signify? That's supposed to be the tree buffer or the fence within the six foot. Yeah, right yeah, here. I see. So this was um, something that I was told by Stan Waltz where between the building and this proposed tree buffer, there's actually a little access road that will go to that expanded parking lot. And we didn't know about that either. Uh, yeah, and I behind didn't. the buildings, so there's yeah. going to be an access road. Yeah, so behind between, the buildings, between her building and our, and our, our property, property line. line, there's going to be a driveway that goes straight Why? back there. Why is that there? Because that's what she planned. And that wasn't on the original site plan last year. I want to point that out. We got um, told nothing. We got told nothing about that. And I got, and I learned that the day that I came being, in. Yeah, pretty much. Um, we, I'm <laughs> not sure. That, that puts both sides of our lot down the driveway and the other side. Both sides are going to be covered with driveway. The part of the same place. The parking lot is actually something that is approved by <coughs> yeah, the fine. code enforcement officer. Yep, and that's. And so that's because fine. this was all being, because the tree buffer was being requested, figured it was best to update the site to include the shifted building and now the expanded parking lot and apparently the access road. Is that in 
right. but does she have to have that permission from us for the access road? But she has to no, be she has to be eight feet away from our line the for the whole driveway. That driveway, that access driveway that's on there, it does have to be eight feet away from the property line. That's in the standards as well. Because I'm wondering, if the way it looks, it does not look like it's going to be eight feet. Well, if it's 30 feet between the line and right the Right here is that's what it's, I'm talking about. So, so if the, I read that there's all sorts of issues with the scale of that drawing, as I mentioned before. Yes. If the move, if the drawing, the new, if the new building has been moved, so that the nearest corner to your property line is 30 feet away, mm -hmm. then in theory there's, there's 22 feet before you get to your 8 feet buffer for a driveway right. to, to exist. Right, yeah. and, and Stan Waltz will have to go out and measure to make sure that, that access road that's on the, the new one that's on there, right. he has to ensure that it is 8 feet from the property line. Richard, has that, has that line been, excuse me, Barbara, has that line been surveyed? Do you have yeah. stakes on that line? Yes. Janice had it surveyed. We had it surveyed early in the beginning, and then she had it redone, and it's even wider than it was. So it's pretty straightforward to yeah, figure it's out. Yeah, actually a straight line across here right now. Excuse me, Barbara. Go ahead. Uh, my only comment is um, doing a circular driving thing around buildings filled with little kids so that this car's 360 degrees just seems like dangerous. Uh, do you mind? Uh, no. Nope. Oh. Well, safety is primary. So one of the reasons why I needed to consider this driveway is that the building was moved over, cut into the parking lot more. The way the uh, people come into the parking lot now, in my opinion, has its issues of danger because they're coming right into the entry area and people just zoom in. And I figured by making a one-way circular, it would take care of that problem. We'd have a drop-off area and then they'd move out of the, out of the parking area. Or they'd either park or they'd drive away. Usually they drop off kids. Um, you know, hearing what I've heard tonight, um, one way to solve this is I can say, I'll go with the fence. I'll build a fence. Sounds like you need it. Yeah. That's visual, you know, you know, it's between a business and a resident a residential area, so and headlights would be annoying to a to a home. Mm -hmm. So um, Well, we're out of there, they're children. So, you know, eight o'clock is our bedtime. So but if to solve this problem, it requires putting up a fence, then let's put up a fence. Maybe more economical. Might be more. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be cheaper to put up trees. Yeah. Okay. Well, and that's what I needed to find out. So, that's actually good news. All right. All right. I'm, I do see the banners. And so, we don't have like that. That driveway was approved. Because it's on our property, there's nothing we can do about it. I think I'd have to check with Stan right. and because if there's if safety's an issue, she has a, a circular driveway at the bottom of her driveway net, right? Put the parking lot on the other side, and then you got no problem whatsoever. You drive in and drive out. But then the children road. would have to cross that area. So I'd have a drop-off area right to the, I, the I, entrance. I I'm sorry if I'm I'm sorry if I'm jumping in now and cutting people off, and I'm sorry if that's outside my uh, power. But uh, I'd I'd have to check with Stan, and I have to check with um, probably MMA to see the driveway specifically. The parking lot Stan can do. Uh, the driveway itself, I have to see if that's a site plan update or if that's still within Stan's um, jurisdiction. The only other question I would have is how much time, once she gets this filled down, are you guys going to allow her to get that fence? Because I tr truly, I don't believe that she's going to put the fence up. Like she said it once before, so I literally don't have a lot of faith. So I need to know from you guys what you're going to do to make sure this fence goes up this time. First of all, Jim and Barbara, did you hear that? Yes, I did. I, I was going to ask the same question. 
Thank you. Oh, go ahead, Matt. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> um, Actually, let me, let me phrase the question a little different way. Yeah. There has to be a, a certificate of certificate of occupancy issued for that building when it's completed, correct? Correct. And, and will um, Stan, when he considers that, consider the entire project before he issues that certificate of occupancy? I would have to ask Stan that, but the practice is usually uh, two months after completing construction, I think is the limit, but again, I'd have to check with Stan on that, that figure. He told 30, us 30 days. Stan said 30 days? He said that, that it was in, in the written that way. In the so conditions? Oh, oh, yeah. That that was the case, then, then that's it. 30 days apparently is in the condition, so it's 30 days after the building is complete. Okay. And then if it's not done, what? Then it's against. What can the town do? Uh, <laughs> do I have to go through the whole enforcement process, or we we do we do send notices and letters initially? We we have to. It's a, we have to send the notice first, but then we start getting into financial fees and penalties and it we still don't get anything at that point, then it is actually court action. So, so there is recourse that the banners could look to for, for, for the town to ensure that these conditions are met. Yes. And because it's written in the conditions, that's the key item that I wanted to get out there, because it's in the conditions, that is something the town does have to follow up on. And I believe because it's tied to the condition of the addition, the addition can't be used if that condition is not met. So, so, well, so in that 30-day period, it's under the good faith that the fence will be built. But mm -hmm. once that 30-day period is over, then we send the letters and say you can't use that addition until the fence is up or until there's an agreed-upon timeline. But I can use my current building. Yes. Okay. Let's hope it never comes to that. Exactly. But I think everybody's aware now of the, of the potential courses of actions that everybody <laughs> has to, or could take, need to make sure that all of the agreements are on that. All right. Okay. I think there does anyone, just need to be. Anyone, anything else on this? So, so as I understand it, Jens, you're, you're rescinding your application? I'm rescinding my um, my request to change to trees. We have nothing to vote on. Yeah, right. that's pretty much it. Okay. You there? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Anna's. Okay. Yep. Okay. Should be it for the application. Okay, I'll call the um, fence guys tomorrow. Okay. Get them on board. That's all I wanted to know. All right. Okay. Thank you a lot for your time. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. you. And do have Shane here to present a pre-application, if you don't mind a five to ten minute conversation. Not at all. Okay. Yeah. And Barbara. Okay. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> Put the pressure on. Get late. I've been sitting in this chair for too long. I understand. Um, so, you guys know my property, I assume. Did you see anything from him or no? No, unfortunately, I didn't get that out of time. But this is about 122 Atlantic Highway, um, where Applecroft is. If people know. You might have to start from okay. the beginning. Okay, <laughs> I'll back it up then. Um, I gave him some stuff. We've been going back and forth for a while, um, trying to figure out how to best attack this. Um, my property is, actually my family's property, is just south of Dow Furniture, uh, 122 Atlantic Highway, big old barn up on the hill there. Uh, 
My mother used to have a kitchenware store there. I've been running catering business out of there since 2017. It was formerly Harvest Moon, and then after the pandemic, I changed the name to Applecroft Catering. Okay. Familiar with the space? Um, so my intention for the last, since I moved back to Maine, was to try to figure out a way to save that property and get it profitable. Um, my first step was to start the catering company because I'm a chef. Um, and now I'm working on a plan to, um, for starters, just to hold weddings in tents in the backfield. Um, I go all over the state now uh, doing weddings in tents. Uh, with porta potties and outdoor kitchens and, and whatnot. Um, but I'd love to not move all over the place and I'd love to start work on getting that property into shape to be an event venue, uh, to be something awesome on the side of Route 1 there. Um, and, and keep that from being, you know, every, every, after my stepfather died, uh, every offer I had to sell that property was to subdivide it. Um, and my mother's sort of last wish, I mean, she's still alive, but you know, her wish to me was, if you're gonna take over this property, please don't let it get subdivided. Right. Um, it's got you know, a ton of, uh, the whole entire west side of Kaler's Pond is on that property, and um, it's just an awesome piece of property. Right. And it's got a big field that you can't see from the road, which is behind the barn. Um, and so that's what I'm looking to use. Um, so I've got quotes to put up a tent for the entire season from Wallace Events in Rockland um, and do porta potties out there and then just host weddings in that property. Um, so the biggest, you know, for sort of first steps to getting that commercially viable um, is the parking and entrance. Um, so I <coughs> submitted to the DOT to move the existing entrance. Um, I think I said 400 feet in that last thing. Um, anyway, the DOT uh, picked the new spot for it just pass it um, based on the sight lines there. Uh, picked the best spot that's sort of, it's sort of further down in that, that <coughs> hollow there. And you can see, got great sight lines in both directions. Um, so my, my thought talking with Max was to uh, gate off and lock the existing driveway, and build a new driveway further down the, the lot, um, and then take some of the some of that front field and make a big grass parking lot, um, and then take the existing driveway and you know like I said gate it and uh, make an emergency entrance only, and then I would have an emergency access road all the way out to that back field uh, that would never have any cars on it. These are not super official looking plans because yeah. I did them myself. <laughs> uh, first draft. Yeah, first, first draft. draft. I don't. I mean, I have no money to. Uh, <laughs> this is me drawing drawing lots of pictures. Is what I do. It uh, looks really good. Hey, thanks. Yeah, it looks nice. Uh, Jim Barber, I'll send you a copy of it uh, after the meeting. Jim, you're muted. There we go. Okay, here I am back again. So I think you addressed right off the bat the, the, the first concern that we have. I've been down that, that driveway. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it is not an obstacle, of course. So putting in a brand new one straight into a parking lot makes makes a lot of sense, especially one that may not uh, reach to. Uh, Max, is there anything in, in what Topsoil presented to this planning board was it five, six years ago now, in terms of sizes of events, numbers of events per year, is there is there a, a go by there that, that could be used to help create the, the formal application that, that would what's make sense? What's this um is this Route 1A? 1A? Yep. 1A completely different than topsoil for two reasons. One, so which is residential. But because of Topsail Farm, yeah. we did make sure to put in the new ordinance event centers, and there would be the small scale and the large, uh, I think small and large ones. The small scale would be limiting to, I think it was 12 events a year, 
where if you have under 25 people, you can have unlimited, but once you go 26, you're only limited to 12 a year. Um, and then there's the major events where there's other uh, differences, but for the large ones, pretty much uh, the site could have more than 12 events over 25 people. So, I mean, he could have one every weekend if he's doing uh, the major event center, pretty much. And, it, you know, of course it would be it would be seasonal. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're only talking about 22 weekends, sort of maximum, uh, is, is what wedding season is around here. Um, and I'm, I'm good friends with everybody at Topsail Farms, and, you know, I've been, been inspired by what they're doing. You know, they're... Will you, you uh, Sorry, Jim. I was just going to say, I just learned something. I didn't realize the limitations at Topsail because it was before my time, or because that's a residential zone. Yeah. So, um, uh, so Max, remind me, uh, the, the commercial Route 1 there, is that like um, so many feet back from Route 1? Or, in other words, is the back of this property um, another? Zone? Is it rural? No, or? it's all it's all Route One or it's Route One A. Route one. Okay. Yeah. Or I mean, at worst, it might be the like very very tip in the back. But from what's being proposed, it's all in Route One A. Is it does does that? I'd have to look at the is map. Is there a cutoff to that? Like how far back it goes? Uh, or yeah. is it the whole lot? Uh, I'm I think your whole lot is in Route One A, but I'd have to check. Okay. The, Proposal itself, all of it is in this one same district. That is guaranteed. Yeah, I'm not going back further, you know, much further than the end of the back field area there. Yeah, that should be good. Um, but I'll, I'll double check those numbers. Uh, you know, in, the, in terms of other concerns, uh, the area that I picked out is there'd be no light stuff. Um, noise, nobody, Sean? Any nobody would see it. No noise consideration? Um, there. You know, the, the, you know, I would, I'll have to see how that, you know, works yeah, out. Okay. I saw that on Amazon, there's a, there's a decibel tester. Yes. Um, I'm going to haul some speakers out and check gotcha. it out. Okay. Um, I mean, what is, the town is 10 o'clock for noise uh, or just? Uh, uh, I mean, it has different decibel levels at right. 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. and 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. But. It depends based on if the abutters are residential or commercial, and I believe that whole area is commercial. I don't think there's a residential person on your left or the right. So, I mean, D Dana lives next door, but he's on right. the commercial lot there. Yeah, it, I mean, and across the street is the weed farm, and it's really it. You know, I mean, there's. I think they would probably fall under commercial then, so it's. Yeah. 55 decibels, but that's that's from the property line. So if you're playing music all the way deep inside the property line yeah. and it barely travels all the way to Route One, then yeah, and, and and I can, I mean, I I don't have an exact measurement on where the the spot is that I put the tent up. It would have to go through essentially like two tree lines mm -hmm. to get to Dana's house, yeah. um, and a and a pretty good chunk of distance. Um, I'm also curious to see how that actually measures. I don't know, because you know some nights I can hear duck puddle, but you know the campground, you know that. Uh, but they also have like, you know, that's like a concert. Uh, Guys, you need to excuse me for just a minute. I see we're on the edge of getting some rain. I got to close some windows. Oh yeah, sure. <laughs> Give me just two minutes and continue. It's supposed to be. Uh, yeah. Shoot. Yeah, um, what, uh, I also would like to know what you are expecting tonight. It's very hard to look at this project without any kind of rough site plan in front of us. Yeah, that's, Jim that's, and I don't have one. That's my fault. That's my <laughs> fault. <laughs> uh, basically, I was just excited to come and talk to you guys and get the plan in front of anybody. Um, is, there, is, is there time to get it on the next meeting? Yes. So it can be on the next agenda. There yeah. was there was some back and forth on whether it's a free application or not. And it was too late to do a formal application, but then we had the rescheduling and 30 main town was something that could be done very quickly and it was actually done very quickly. So I figured we could at least get Shane here now for a quick pre-application if there was time. And then if there were any 
main notes you all might have. Like I think noise is what's pretty much noise is a big what one. was expected. Yeah. So if there are any other items, we can at least have that prepared by the uh, next meeting. And How then that would be the formal site plan. So is there a process for checking that now? Like, how, how do I go about testing that? Testing noise? Uh, <laughs> well, you get decibel meters, that, yeah. and you yeah. can, I suppose you could play some music over a speaker and just walk back, and yeah. and you'll get a reading. Yeah. You know, because, I mean, the, the, the problem with the, the wedding industry stuff is mm -hmm. I've got a book now right. for next summer. I follow you. Um, so... I haven't started any work. I don't, you know, this is, like I said, it's very early, but I need to know that, that we're going to go ahead with right. this and so that I can book it and people know they have a place to get married. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's that's the sort of bind on it. Yeah, I know, I, I mean, I know there's meters. Yeah. Can't help. Oh, yeah, so so they're like 15 yeah. bucks on Amazon. That might be a place to start just that's to it. give okay. you a rough idea. I'll have that down. That'll be fun. <laughs> I've got a bunch of big speakers. <laughs> Don't tell us that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right, so I'm sorry I missed part of that, but what are your plans for getting a, an application in front of us? Or did you already discuss he, So Shane actually does have an application, and I just didn't get it out to people to do a quick pre-application, but it okay. will be part of the bundles for the meeting in two weeks. Okay, for the August one? I'm sorry, the August meeting two weeks from now? Yep. Okay. Um, this okay. was just more of if there was any immediate thoughts from the board, like the noise concerns. Um, one thing that I'm going to point out is part of the request is the campground, 10 sites or less. That's something that Stan and I reviewed. I've already given Shane my notes on that. I, I don't know if the board would like to just have it all clumped together as one or if you prefer Stan and I just approve the campground portion on our own and then you guys will only handle the event center portion. What campground? What are you talking about? So that's, <laughs> so that's the that's the other half of the application that uh, oh. there would just okay. that there would just be ten sites even further in uh, to the property, a lot further away from Route One itself. Uh, yeah, I was, I was, yeah, Max told me that there was, uh, right now, uh, without being a formal campground, I could do up to 10 uh, tent sites in the woods. Um, no electricity, no running water, just a campsite with a fire ring and a picnic table and trash cans and shared porta potties. This might be a silly question, but is there any responsibility for noise to the people in the campground? Like, could you be introducing additional noise constraints by putting people in a campground? They would all be booked close? for the same event. Okay, I'm just yeah. asking, like, if that. No, it'd, yeah. it'd, be, it'd be the the wedding venues that I see. A lot of them, like Topsail, um, try to accommodate the wedding party on yeah. site. Yeah, no, that so makes you sense. Can have I your, just your bridal party staying there. It's basically just you know, can you can you have beds for people to stumble back to? Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that there wasn't anything that was going to get in the way of like that decibel requirement, based on like the commercial yeah. zoning, by having a campground there. I don't know if it would. And it's not not a, a campground like dog puddle. We're not right, talking right, about right. RVs. Yeah. And, you know, and it, it's a it's a walk in hike-in situation, more like... Um, thanks, thanks to, excuse me, to, to answer your question, my, my thoughts would be that the planning board should only look at the uh, event okay. part of the of the application, but that there be, be full knowledge in that application that there's also a campground that you are addressing. And so we can see if there's anything that, that concerns us but we will approve the campground and leave that to you instead. And it is actually part of the application already, and I think it includes the specific standards for it anyways. So I will send out that application to everyone just as an email initially, and I'll send it in the physical bundles next week. But, uh, yeah, it does include the tent uh, or campground. What, what term do you want to use for this? Yeah. No, one is good. If we have any questions, we're not going to be hesitant to ask. Good. Look forward to two weeks from now. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I have. Uh, a, we got, 
Um, you got the fine ready and everything. Yes. I, I think we're actually going to wrap up if you don't mind holding off for five minutes. You got it. I'll wait to then. All right. Okay, we got one minute to afford the no. Um, approve the planning board minutes from May 12th. I think we've gone through them yeah. and commented on them. I uh, no I did. Does anyone have any other well, nice you've looked at them, right? Yes. I just can't believe it was uh, that long ago that we've done this. Things for us to sign. Um, sign didn't get lost. Yeah, it's weird. Well, back in May there was the retail store, but after talking with the attorneys and then the ordinance passing, that's no longer something that has to be approved anymore. Although it probably should, for the record. But I don't think. I'm trying to think what the last item was that was approved. Oh, and then in March there was the. Uh, Seacott Trucking, which that didn't get approved, and then hmm. I think February there was something, but there wasn't anything in January. It's just been a long time since something was approved, approved. Second. Johnny is second. second it. Yes. Johnny seconds it. Okay. Roll we'll call around to, to vote the approval. Johnny? Aye. 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 Sarah? Aye. Aye. Yeah. I wasn't okay. present. <laughs> you were abstaining? You were abstaining. Barbara? Yep. Aye. And I also approve. So that's four approvals and one abstention. Um. Next, do we need, so, okay, so the first thing I'm going to comment from planning board members, item A, the, the housing assistance. Max has given me a, a letter that he's written to Julie over my signature, which basically says that we don't have to wait, that there's no planning board approval for the demolition or rehab of the AD Gray School. We have, we don't have any skin of the, in that part of the game. We will on the construction when they come up for a, a permit for new construction, but we don't get involved with the demolition. Yep. Does anyone disagree or take issue with that before I sign it to send it back to Drew? I just have one concern. When they, they've been to demolish the building, correct? Yes. And we know it has mold in it and asbestos. Yes. And my concern was from a health perspective, do they have the ability to let the abutters know, or how do they know that they're doing that in the safest, most salubrious manner? So for this process, half the money is actually going to the demolition, and the other half does go to the remediation process. Right. And what happens is this is money that we're getting from the state, and then we reimburse VOA for it. So when VOA does want to move forward with demolition or remediation, then we can send out notices to the so we will have, but we will never have an opportunity to question i mean to put that question how how they would safeguard i mean you have mold in the building if right, you're going to demolish right. it what are the safeguards and there's asbestos in there and i'm just questioning will we have any ability to ask or how that process goes that will be what Volunteers of America has to ask us and tell us before. Okay, they no, no, I just, I just looking no, at it from no, a, I'm just, a safety perspective. Right. No, I, I guess I was just confused on that. So VOA will be telling us when they want to demolish it and how they're going to demolish it. Right. And then, when we say okay, that's good, then they can go forward with that. I see. And then so we'll so obviously notify the neighbors. neighbors. When you say they'll be telling us, who, who are they speaking with? Julie uh, with the select board. Julie, myself. Uh, Julie, myself, uh, select Stan. board, Stan, Peg, the finance director, but that's because she's more on the record keeping side of things. But yeah, it's pretty much any town staff member. 
but it will be me. And as, and as, and as citizens, we can direct questions and concerns to the town staff. Yep. Now, John, if you wanted to, not as part of the planning board, but just as a right. resident. Right. Yep. Hey, what's yep. going on? Good point. Is my recollection right, Max, that the asbestos has already been remediated? Uh, I have to remember the whole bit. Um, there is actually an environmental review for anyone who is interested in that uh, property. Uh, but I believe there are very, I believe they did find traces, but I'm not, it's not as bad as it was when they remediated it like a decade ago, but I, I don't know the levels of that. I just remember it came up before. Yeah. All right, so I've signed it. How do I get it back to you? Um, when I have to get your signature for 2818 Atlantic Highway, I can pick it up. <laughs> perfect, perfect. To be on the safe side, bring along a spare copy. Perfect. In case I can't find it, because I'm going to put it someplace safe. <laughs> Will do. All right, LD2003. Talk to us quickly. Or do you want to put it out until next time? Um, very quickly. It's just that the state passed it, and uh, pretty much everyone is saying how how it's great and good intentions, but it does not give us a lot of time to put something in place to prepare for it. Uh, people are concerned about the short-term rentals, being able to abuse it. People are wondering, you know, who's going to push the boundaries to try and sneak something by and say, oh, this is allowed under LD 2003. So I'm working with other planners in the region to try and come up with some common solutions and everything. And that's probably something that's going to be brought to your attention maybe later for ordinance revisions. Uh, so we can try and aim for a June 2023 approval. And because of LD 2003, I assume we'll just table the lowering of the dimensional standards that was originally planned until we've addressed LD 2003 changes pretty much, unless anyone has any uh, objections to that. I know the MMA said they're going to put out a big uh, white paper on that. Have you seen it? I have not, and I've been waiting on that too. Well, I heard it, at, it from two lawyers that said yeah. they were going to do it, so. I think if it's I'll the one... I use five words, I won't say it. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Good. Any, yeah. any other business, anyone? Uh, it's late. Thank you for yep. your... Thank you. ...participation and, and precious time. I think it is raining out now. <laughs> um, hey. Be careful going home. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I second it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Everybody Aye. says Aye. Aye. I've already worked 12 hours. All right. Yeah. I should have voted <laughs> against that. <laughs> <laughs>